Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible, Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study through the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Currently, we are in Leviticus, and we're going to pick it up in chapter 6. Again, just to kind of remind you, we're skimming through the sort of meticulous instructions, commands that God has given for the priests, and how they are to administer the offerings of atonement. In other words, it was the priest's duty that when people sin and everyone sins, these were their instructions. Leviticus is the OPM, Operator's Manual, how to, uh, how, what, what God's standard, uh, what he was accepting as atonement for sin. And by the way, that was any sin, because any sin to God, you missed the mark. <clears throat> you failed the test. That's important to know that any time you sin, you failed the test. And this was the 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 Levitical way, the Old Testament way of making atonement for man's continual sin. And as we see, uh, it is very meticulous. So. That's why I said I'm not spending too much time. Uh, I mean, it's repeat, repetitive. And besides the fact that um, even if we were under the Old Testament law, this wouldn't be for us anyway because this is for the, how the priests, how the priests were to perform their duties before God. All right. So... Chapter 6, he says, The Lord spoke to Moses when someone sins and offends the Lord by deceiving his neighbor in regard to a deposit, a security, <coughs> or a robbery, or defrauds, defrauds his neighbor, or finds something lost and lies about it, or swears falsely about any of the sinful things a person may do, once he has sinned and acknowledged his guilt, he must return what he stole or defrauded or deposit, deposit entrusted to him or the lost item he found or anything else about which he swore falsely. He must make full restitution for it and add a fifth of its value to it. He is to pay to the owner on the day he acknowledges his sin. In other words, don't draw it out. Like Anyway, then he must bring a restitution offering to the Lord, an unblemished ram from the flock according to your assessment of its value, and the restitution offering to the priest. In this way, the priest will make atonement for his, for his uh, on his, Oh, I'm sorry. In this way, the priest will make atonement on his behalf before the Lord, and he will be forgiven for anything he may have done or incurred guilt. Now, this is interesting because, keep this in mind, we deal with this kind of stuff every day. Remember I said, in, 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 in many respects, we, um, we like to not acknowledge that these kinds of sins are that serious. Um, but remember, before God, they were extremely serious. All sin was um, serious. So if you defrauded someone, lied to someone, stole from someone, did any kind of wrong, notice he said, and notice he said this, you were to first make that right. In other words, one, acknowledge your sin. Two, then make restitution, make up for it, return the items or pay. And then he says, with 20% at 20% interest to that. Then you were to bring the offering. Now think about that. You were to bring the offering. So you, you were to make the, 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 whatever the wrong he, he listed, right? You were, you were to correct that before your brother first. 
before you made any offering to God. And it kind of sounds like when in, in the fifth chapter, the fifth and sixth and seventh chapter of Matthew, <coughs> when Jesus said that if you you see that you you have an ought against your brother, go to your brother first, right, and make it right with him, and then come offer your your your, your offering of worship to God. Verse 8 says, The Lord spoke to Moses to command Aaron and his sons. This is the law of burnt offerings. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to skip down. Verse 14. Now, this is the law of the grain offering. And he says, Aaron's sons will present it before the Lord in front of the altar. Uh, verse 19. The Lord spoke to Moses. This is the offering that Aaron and his sons must present to the Lord on the day that he is anointed. Okay. Uh, let me skip down. Verse 24. The Lord spoke to Moses. Tell Aaron and his sons. This is the law of the sin offering. The sin offering is most holy and must be slaughtered before the Lord at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. The priest who offered it as a sin offering is to eat it. It must be eaten in the holy place and in the courtyard of the tent. Now, only the priests could eat this. Now, we're going to, again, keep this in mind because as we move further down into the Old Testament, you're going to see where some of the people sinned in this way. Uh, let me go to chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7. He says, now this is the law of restitution offering. It is especially holy. The restitution offering must be slaughtered at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. All right, I'm going to skip down. Um, verse 11, now this is the law of the fellowship offering, sacrifice that someone may present to the Lord. Um, let me... Ooh, let me skip down. Uh, if the uh, let's say here, if the sacrifice verse sixteen, the sacrifice offering of the vow or free will offering is to be eaten on the day he presents it, his sacrifice, and what is left over will be eaten on the next day. Let me go on. Verse nineteen: Meat that touches anything unclean must not be un must not be eaten. It is to be burnt up. Let me go down. <clears throat> the Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites, you are not to eat any fat of an ox, sheep, or goat. The fat of an animal that dies naturally or is mauled by wild beasts may be used for any purpose, but you must not eat it. If anyone eats animal fat from a fire offer presented to the Lord, that person who eats it must be cut off from the people. Um, whoever you live, you must not eat the blood of any bird or animal. Whoever eats any blood that a person, uh, and that person must be cut off. So, uh, I'm going to throw in my little two cents right here. I wonder if this means when you cook your meal raw or rare, as they call it. Anyway, I'm just kind of poking there. But notice he said that you were not supposed to eat blood from animals. Verse 28. The Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites that the one who presents a fellowship offering, sacrifice to the Lord, must bring an offering to the Lord from his sacrifice. To get down. Uh, let me go to chapter 8. Um, chapters 8. The Lord spoke to Moses, take Aaron, his sons with him, the garments, the anointing all, the bull of the sin offering, the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread, and assemble the whole community at the entrance of the tent meeting. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and the community assembled at the entrance to the tent of the meeting. Moses said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded to be done. And the Lord presented Aaron and his sons and washed them with water, <coughs> sort of a open inauguration anointing a setting apart okay that their official priesthood ministry notice he said he washed him with water verse 7 he put the tunic on Aaron wrapped the sash around him clothed him with the robe and put the ephod on him this was the priestly garment remember there were several chapters 
about them how they made the priestly gar garment especially to be worn when they are ministering at the altar. He said he put the woven band on the ephod around him and fastened it to him. Then he put the breast uh, uh, piece on him at the place and placed the urim and the thurim into the breast place. Now again, it's not much kind of description on the urim and, and thurim. It's a little, little two little devices. And we're going to learn later that they would actually seek the counsel of God Sometimes getting kind of answers from this device. Verse 9. He also put the turban on his head and placed the gold medallion and holy diadem on the front of the turban as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then Moses took the anointing all and anointed the tabernacle and everything in it to consecrate them. He sprinkled some of the oil on the altar seven times, anointing the altar and its utensils. In the basins with his stand and to consecrate them, he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed and consecrated him. And then Moses presented Aaron's sons, clothed them, clothed them with tunics, wrapped sashes around them, and fastened headbands on them as the Lord commanded them. Now the anointing we're going to see will be a practice prophets would use when God would call and choose a king. They would pour oil on the head. Also, somebody into the office of the prophet. Okay, and you'll see that later. The prophets would be the kind of the spiritual advisors, giving the word and counsel of God. Verse 14. Then he brought a bull near for the sin offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the bull and on the sin offering. Then Moses slaughtered it, took the blood, and applied it with his finger on the horns of the altar and on all sides purifying the offers he poured out the blood at the base of the altar and consecrated it so that the atonement can be made on it it's sort of the official kind of inauguration of the the actual priest duties i'm going to skip down uh because the same thing happened in all of these kind of commandments and things that they did oh uh, let's see here um, let's see verse 28 then Moses took from them from their hands and burned them on the altar uh, this was the ordination offering for a pleasing aroma a fire offering to the Lord um, now we're going to come back to this that's why I'm kind of mentioning this because Aaron's sons are going to mess up and it's going to cost their lives when they, when they don't do it this way uh, let's see, 31, Moses said to Aaron his sons, boil the meat at the entrance of the ten, tent of the meeting and eat it there with the bread in his baskets for the ordination of the offering as I command. Aaron and his sons are to eat it. So no one else was to eat that, okay? Um, let me go to chapter 9. Let's see, verse 9, on the eighth day Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, take your young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, both without blemish, and present them before the Lord. And tell the Israelites, take a male goat for the sin offering and a calf and a lamb, male yearlings without blemish for a burnt offerings, and the ox and the ram and the fellowship offering and sacrifice for the Lord grain offering mixed with oil for today the Lord is going to appear for you so you see this kind of again meticulous process that they that the priest had to go through um, verse 5 then they brought what Moses commanded in front of the tent of the meeting and the whole community came forward and stood before the Lord and Moses said this is what the Lord commanded you to do that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Approach the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering. Make atonement for yourselves and the people. Sacrifice the people offering and make atonement for them as the Lord's command. So remember the high priests were the first to make atonement for themselves. And then they were to make atonement for the people. 
So Aaron approached the altar and slaughtered it and slaughtered the calf at the sin offering for himself. Aaron's sons brought the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and applied it to the horns of the altar. Uh, he he poured out the blood at the base of the altar. He burned the fat, the kidneys, and the fatty lobe and the liver in the sin offering. <clears throat> offering on the altar as the Lord had commanded him, he burnt it up. Let me skip down. Uh, it says, and then, uh, this is, um, ooh, let me go back. Let's see, verse 22. Um, Aaron lifted up his hand towards the people and blessed them. He came down, uh, he came down after the sacrificing the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offering. Moses and Aaron then entered the tent of meetings. And when they came out, they blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all of the people. Fire came from the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell face down toward the ground. Uh, let's see here. Um, let me read this. <laughs> <laughs> now, Aaron's sons, Nadab and, Ahu, and Abihu, each took his own fire pan. And this is another example, right? So this is kind of this, that, that inauguration was done. And it says, they put fire in it, placed incense on it, and presented unauthorized fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them to do. Then fire came from the Lord and burned them to death before the Lord. So Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord meant when he said, I will show my holiness to those who are near me, and I will reveal my glory before all the people. But Aaron remained silent. Now, um, <laughs> Moses summoned uh, Mishael and, and Eliphaz, sons of Aaron's uncle, Ezeo, um, and said to them, Come here and carry your relatives away and from in front of the sanctuary and place them outside the camp. So they came forward and carried them in their tunics outside the camp, as Moses had said. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons Eleazar and Ithmiar, uh, it, it, uh, Ithmiar, Do not let your hair hang loose and do not tear your garments. Or else you will die. Meaning grief. This is the whole the idea of grief. Don't grieve. And the Lord will become angry with the whole community. However, your brothers, the whole house of Israel, may mourn over that tragedy when the Lord sent the fire. You must you must not go outside the entrance of the tent of the meeting or you will die. For the Lord's anointing oil is on you. So they did as the Lord said. The Lord, the Lord spoke to Aaron, you and your sons are not to drink wine or beer when you enter the tent of the meeting, or else you will die. This is a permanent statute throughout your generation. You must distinguish between the holy and the common, and the clean and the unclean, and teach the Israelites and all the statutes that the Lord had given to them through Moses. Now, some people seem to think that this is one of the reasons why uh, they died, that they got a little tipsy. And they started fooling around on the altar. You also see a clear distinction of what the definition of holy and unholy is. In other words, when you come to God, you are to always come to God in a holy way. You are not to treat him common. Uh, verse 12, Moses spake to Aaron and his remaining son, Eleazar, and Itma, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I know I'm butchering his name. Take the grain offering that is left over from the fire offering to the Lord and eat it and, and, and eat it prepared without yeast beside the altar because it is especially holy. You must eat it. Um, you must um, you must eat it in a holy place because it is your portion and you, your sons. Uh, from the fire offerings to the Lord, for this is what I commanded you, but you and your sons and your daughters may eat the breast 
of the pre uh, presentation offering uh, and the thigh of the contributions and any ceremonial clean place because these portions have been assigned to you and your children from the Israelites and the fellowship offerings. They are to bring the thigh and the contribution breast offerings and present them together with the offerings and the portion of the fire to wave at the presentation offering for the Lord. It will uh, belong permanently to you, your children, and to the Lord. Later, Moses inquired about the male goat and the tin offering, which had already been burnt up. He was angry with Eleazar, Ismar, Aaron's surviving sons, and asked, Why didn't you eat the sin offering? Uh, in the sanctuary, for it is especially holy, and he has assigned it to you to take away the guilt of the community and to make atonement for them before the Lord. Since it is blood and was not brought inside the sanctuary, you should have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded you. But Aaron replied to Moses, See, today they presented the sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, since these things have happened to me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it not have been acceptable in the Lord's sight? And Moses heard it, it was acceptable to him. Now, um, so kind of this God, you're going to see from time to time, God would make these points to them that they are to always treat the Lord's offering holy, the things of God holy. Okay. All right, guys. We'll pick it up in chapter 11 in the next study.